All right then, so we're making some good progress. We've got a bunch of different reusable UI components and we've started to flesh out some of the pages that we need as well. In this lesson, I wanna talk about another routing component that we can use instead of the stack called the tabs component. And the tabs component lets us basically add little tabs with icons at the bottom of the screen, which a user can click on to navigate to different pages. So I'm just showing you some footage here of the final project again so that you can see this tabbed navigation in action and it's these things at the bottom down here that we'll be making. So each one of these icons and titles is considered its own tab and when we click on a tab we're navigated to the page for that tab. Alright so we've seen what they look like now let's try making those tabs for a new route group inside this application. First of all, we need to make a new folder for this group, much like we did for the auth group over here. But this time we're going to call this folder dashboard inside parentheses. So the idea is that all the pages inside this dashboard group are going to be the ones which a user can see when they're eventually logged into the app. If they're not logged in, then they're not going to be able to see them. Now, we're going to be adding all that authentication logic later on in the course. So for now, let's just focus on this group and setting up a tabbed navigation for it. Now, before we actually start on the tabs or anything, I just want to make some pages for this dashboard group. So let's do those first of all. I'm going to have a profile page. So profile.jsx, this is eventually where we're going to show like the user's email, maybe a little avatar as well, and a logout button later. Um, next, we'll do a create page. So create.jsx, and that's going to be where a user creates books. And then we'll also have a books.jsx page, and that's going to be for where we list all the books as well. So now we just need to flesh these out. And what I'm going to do is just paste them from my GitHub repo. So... Let me paste the create one in first of all. And they're all really simple, by the way. This just saves loads of time, so you'd have to watch me type all these out from scratch, which I'm sure would be really boring. But we just import a few things, the style sheet from React Native, then some theme components, the text and view, and a spacer as well. We have the component called create, uh, a themed view with some extra container styles down here. We have a theme text for the title with some extra styles as well down here and then a title for the page, followed by a space, and that is it. So that's the create page. Let's now do the books one, which I'm also going to grab from my GitHub repo and paste them in. So same again, we have all the same imports, component called books, a themed view, spacer, then theme text for the title, the styles are down here, so very, very similar. And then finally, we need the profile one, so let me just grab that and paste it in. This one's a tiny bit different, but still all the same imports, a component called profile, themed view. Then we have a themed text right here, again, kind of for the title, but this is where we're eventually going to output the user's email where they're logged on. So that would be their email. And then we have like a subtitle down here, which just says uh, time to start reading some books. All right, then a space. So that's pretty much it. That is all the three components done, all the three pages. Okay, so now from the home page, let's try linking to one of those just so we can see it. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to come down here and we will say this is to forward slash profile. Remember, we don't take into account the name of the folder because it's a group inside parentheses. And when we do that, it doesn't include the folder name in the route path. So just forward slash profile. And then we will say this is the profile page just so we've got a way to get to it. And I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to just reload the app on my phone so we can try this out. And now if I go to the profile page, there we can see the profile page. Now we can't get to the other ones yet because we're not linking between them. But as we add the tabs layout at the bottom shortly, we will be able to. For now, what I also want to do is get rid of this thing at the top, this title in each one. Now we know there's two things we need to do in order to do that. The first thing we need to do is come to the root layout. And like we have done for the auth group, we need to do the same thing for the dashboard group where we say the header shown is false. So let me copy that, paste it down here. And then we'll change this to dashboard like so. I'm going to save that now. And then I'm going to come to the dashboard folder. I'm going to create a new file. And that's going to be called underscore layout.jsx. Now inside here, we now need to create a template for all these pages in here, the books, create and profile pages. And by the way, I know we can still see this title and the header at the top over here, even though we said down here for this group header shown is false, but it is going to sort itself out shortly. 
All right, so now inside this file, I'm going to boilerplate it by typing RN FE and then hitting tab. And I'm going to call this dashboard layouts. All right. Now we don't need all those imports at the top, so we can get rid of those. And we can also remove the view in the template as well. All right then, so before, when we use the stack navigation mechanism, we just output that stack component right here in the layout. And we can do a similar thing for the tabs. We can just start typing tabs. And as you do that, you can click on this option to import the component from Expo Router. And then if we just made this a self-closing tag, save the file and refresh the app, then when we navigate to that page, the profile page, for example, inside the dashboard group, we should already see all those tabs at the bottom of the screen. So the Expo Router automatically adds all the pages we have inside this group to the tabbed section at the bottom. And we can click between those tabs to see all the pages. But currently, all those tabs have this horrible little triangle icon, which we want to update. And the active color of these tabs is currently blue as well, which I want to change. And also, all the tabbed pages have this heading bar at the top of the page as well, which I don't think we need for all the dashboard screens. So then, let's start by setting some global options for the tabs layout and also maybe add some theme colors as well so it looks good for the light and dark themes. To do that, we can add the screen options prop to the tabs component where we pass an object as the value. Now, the first property I'm going to add to this object is the header shown property. And I want to set that to be false so that for each page, we don't see that header and the title at the top. We don't really need those because we don't need the back button if we're on the dashboard. We can use the tabs at the bottom to navigate between the pages. And then next, I want to customize how the tab bar looks a little bit, mainly in terms of what color it should be and what the color of active tab should be instead of that horrible blue color. Because by default, regardless of whether we're viewing this in dark mode or light mode, these colors would be the same. The background would be white and the active color blue, etc. We want to customize that using the color themes that we made for both light and dark modes. So to do that then, we need to find out the user's current color scheme, light or dark, by saying up here, const color scheme is equal to, and then we're going to use the use color scheme hook, which we invoke, and that also needs importing, by the way. And beneath that, we can then say const theme is equal to colors, which needs to be imported as well. And then inside square brackets, we're going to pass whatever the value of the color scheme is to select a palette from that colors object. Now, as a backup, in case that value is null, we can say double question mark followed by colors dot light. So again, we're saying here, if the color scheme value is null, which it can be on rare occasions, then default to the light theme from the colors object. Okay, so now we've got the theme selected, we can use different color properties on that theme to style the tabs. Now, just very quickly, let's open that colors file up and just look at some of those color properties on the light and dark themes. So we've got the nav background one, which is different for dark and light, and we'll be using that to style the background color of the tab bar. We've also got these icon colors right here, icon color and icon color focused. Now, these colors are meant to be for the icons for each tab, where currently they're little triangles over here. So the icon color focused would be for the icon where the page is active, and it would replace that current blue color. And the icon color property would be for the icons when they're not active or focused, should I say. So we'll be using those for the icon colors when we update them in the next lesson. But we're also going to use these same property names for the text color of each tab too, underneath the icons. So we have the text when the tab is active and also when it's not. And we'll be using the icon color and icon color focused values for those. So let's head back to the layout file and just add those in. First of all, we're going to add another property to the options, which is the tab bar style property. And that allows us to style the tab bar as a whole. So we set this equal to an object where we can pass different styles to this, like the background color. So I'm going to do that. And the value of this should be theme dot nav background and for light mode that's going to be like a really faint gray but for dark mode it's going to be more of a dusky purple i'm also going to add some padding to the top as well so there's more space around the icons and i'm going to set that to be 10 
And then finally, I'm going to make the height a little bit larger by adding the height property and setting it equal to 90. Okay, so now we've styled the tab bar itself, the background color and the spacing. And next up, I want to style the text color of each tab. So then to do this, we can add a couple of new properties. The first one is called tab bar active tint color. And we use this to apply a color to the active tab text. Now the color that we'll be using is the icon color focused from the color theme, which we just talked about before. So let's add that in. All right, and next we need to color the inactive tabs too. So we'll use a property called tab bar inactive tint color, which is a mouthful. And the value of this should be theme dot icon color. All right, so now once we've done that, if we save the file, we should see that the blue color changes to a deep charcoal color, almost black. And the inactive ones are a slightly lighter gray. You might need to refresh your app by shaking your phone and choosing to reload to see those changes, by the way. The live reload doesn't always work when you're making navigation changes. All right, so now let's see the dark mode colors by going to the app.json file down here. And I'm going to switch the interface style to be dark and then I'm going to save it. And if we reload the app, like I just described by shaking the phone and choosing reload, then when it does load, we should see those tab styles for dark mode as well, which we do. Awesome. Okay, so there's one more thing I want to do right now, and that is to add options to each individual tab to update their titles, because by default, they all appear as the file name and you might want to change their display. All I really want to do is make them start with an uppercase letter, but you could change the title entirely if you wanted to. So then just like when we had a stack component, if we open that root layout file up, we can see that we registered individual stack screens within it where we can apply options individually to each one. We can do the same with tabs. So let's give this a go. Now, the first thing we need to do then is make it so this is not a self-closing uh, component and we'll just add the end one on right here. And then inside that we can add these different tab screens. So we say tabs dot screen much like we did with stack dot screen and then inside here we need the name prop to say what the name of this particular tab is or this page so for example i could say profile which matches the file name right this thing right here and then we can also add the options and that is going to be equal to an object whereby we can set the title and it's going to be profile again but this time it's going to be an uppercase I'm just going to format this a little bit better because we will be adding more props in the future and I don't want it to get too messy. And then I'm going to grab all this and paste it down here a couple of times. Then we'll update them. So this one is going to be books and we need to update this to be books with a capital. And then this final one is create and we'll update this to be create with a capital. Save it. And now we can see they've updated down here. Awesome. So then my friends, now we've implemented a new dashboard route group and in that a nested layout which uses the tabs navigation system.